Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this episode I'm looking at tidying up the mesh and sorting it out ready for unwrapping and baking. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. Okay so here's the high poly mesh and if I show the low poly mesh you can see it's fairly close to the high poly, but covers it up reasonably well. Now what I'm going to have to do is join all these low poly pieces together, but in order to do that, I need to apply the modifiers. We have to apply the shrink wrap modifier because they're shrink wrapped two different objects. So if I tried to join them all together, it wouldn't know which object to shrink wrap to. And we have to apply the mirror modifier because that's the first modifier. So if you try and apply the shrink wrap modifier without the mirror modifier, it moves the mirror around the place and you get a line down the middle. I'll show you a bit about what that means. So if I select my axe head here, and let's come around to the top and go into edit mode and zoom in a touch. If I turn on my cage and the result of the back, you can see that at some point I turned clipping off. So clipping just there under the mirror modifier, and I need to come across here and just press G then Y and squeeze those back together. You can sometimes press a couple, G then Y, and move them in. It's not always that easy with snapping and the shrink wrap on. So just going around, just check this shape. This is the only one where I've got these anomalies, but it's a good example of what might happen if you don't apply the mirror modifier first and then the shrink wrap. So we have to apply both if we want to link them all together. So that's all fixed now. Your mesh might not have those anomalies like mine, but it's just an example of what might happen if you add the modifiers in the wrong order. I'll show more about that in a second. Okay, so back into object mode, and I want to apply all my modifiers. So Control A over the mirror and Control A over the shrink wrap and now there's our finished mesh there. So for example, if I select on the handle here and I just apply the shrink wrap modifier, and we know there's an issue with the shrink wrap modifier in here, and we've got to sort that out once we apply the mirror. So I'll just apply the shrink wrap, control A, and let's go into edit mode. You can see it's split it apart, and that's because it was after the mirror. So once you apply that, the mirror then pushes around to where the shrink wrap modifier was, and we have to push all these in again. So I'll undo that, and I'll apply them in the right order, so mirror first and then shrink wrap and we can see it's kept its shape. We do have to come in and tidy this up of course. So G to grab with snapping enabled it will snap to the edge of our shape. So just a little bit of tidying up to do where the symmetry was slightly out. Don't worry that some of these are sticking through. We'll probably get away with it when I talk about baking later. Okay so that's much better. Let's go through the other objects and apply their modifiers and then we'll join them up. So if I select this one Always the top one first, control A and control A. The strap down here. If you forget control A is apply, then it's under here as well, apply under this drop down menu. Control A. And these two don't have any modifiers. Let's just double check what this looks like and whether it's snapping okay. It's not doing too bad to be honest. That should be okay. So let's just double check those objects and make sure they haven't got any modifiers and we're all good. Okay, so now I can go in and start linking these up. So I'll just hide the high poly mesh and make sure that doesn't get in the way for the moment. And I need to select all my objects except for the toruses at the bottom because I'm not actually going to link those together. There's no need. And Control J is to join. And you can see it becomes one object. I'll rename that Axe Low Poly or LP for short. Okay, now I can go in and start thinking about how this joins up. And it should be a fairly straightforward process. This time, we can turn on snapping to vertex. And now I can just grab one of these verts. It might be easier in X-ray mode, but it can be a bit tricky to see. But if I press G to grab, it links to the one closest to it. I'll keep that on for this one. And now I'll turn it off because I think we should be able to see the others. So G to grab that one, pull it up to there. These are slightly in the wrong place, but it doesn't matter. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, Make sure you've got auto merge verts on when you do this, otherwise you'll have loads of doubles. If you forgot to do that, don't worry, just merge by distance. And the last one in there, I'll just turn on the X-ray for that. And that's all joined together. At that point, if you really wanted quads, not that it would make any difference, you could delete that edge there. But there's absolutely no point at this stage because we don't need to add any more topology. Having a triangle there is absolutely fine. Okay, so around the top here, this is a slightly different scenario. If I just bring back my high poly for the moment, you can see that it needs a face in there. So I'll get rid of that. So we should be able to select this edge loop around here with 
Alt left click and Shift Alt left click to select this one as well. Let's just check we've got all those, which we have. There's a little bit of a mess in here. So I'll sort that out first before doing this. So deselect those with Alt A and let's, let's just go to X-ray mode. I'll turn snapping off for now and just move that gently above. If you can move a mesh in a gentle way. Okay, so X-ray back off and now I can select this one with Alt left click and Shift Alt left click this one. And now we can press Control E to go to our edge menu. You can also find that up here, edge menu and bridge edge loops and it creates the mesh in there for me. It might be an idea at this point just to go back to your high poly and make sure this is marrying up. So let's go to snapping and face snapping this time. And let's just choose these G to grab so they actually snap in there out of the way quite nicely. You can see without the shrink wrap it snaps right to the object rather than above, but that's okay. Okay, so that edge is fine. Let's hide the high poly again so it doesn't get in the way. And do we need to do the same sort of thing around here? It looks like we do. Now this might be slightly different actually. So it looks like we need to marry some of these up, but create a new edge as well. Yes, yeah, so coming around the bottom here, we need to create a new edge. So we'll do some of it with snapping. So turn vertex snapping on. Ah, now I've got this completely wrong and there's quite a discrepancy here, but that's not too bad. This one will go up to there and this one will go across to there. So we can select this face, press I for inset and B for boundary. So it gets rid of the boundary and then we've got a quad base mesh and we've got enough verts. I'll just come around here. I bet I've done the same on the other side as well. Yes, I have. So select this one, I and B's already on for boundary and we're there. Okay, now I can go to my verts and make sure snapping to verts is on, G to grab, and move these into position now. Okay, so it's just here where I need to fill the edge loops in. So two to go to edge mode and select that edge loop there, but deselect the far edges here, because to do an edge bridge like we're going to do, you select two sides like this. So control E for the edge menu, bridge edge loops, and it creates the mesh in between. Let's bring back our high poly and just make sure we're close to meeting up with those and that's looking okay. Okay, so we're getting there. We need to join these together now back to vertex and I'll do this one fairly quickly. Oh, hide the high poly first, otherwise it's trying to snap to those verts. Okay, so they're all joined up around the top there. Just these handles now, this is fairly straightforward. So into edge mode, select those two and control E, bridge edge loops. Down the bottom here, that one and that one, control E, bridge edge loops, and we're looking good. Okay, let's just quickly check our mesh and make sure we're happy that there's not too much blobbiness. And when I say blobbiness, I mean the mesh coming through. So possibly a touch across here, but I don't see anywhere where it's really a big problem. Tiny bit of coming through like this is okay. Maybe a little bit too much there, so I'll just click on this one and move that up slightly. And we're still on vert, so that was a little bit wobbly. It's better on faces, that is. It's all okay. Okay, and everywhere else looks pretty good. Let's just have a look down the bottom here. Now there's a huge end gone down here. I obviously didn't ever sort this one out. That might cause us problems down the line. So I'll just turn my high poly off and make sure this is a quad base mesh down the bottom here. So just knife tool and all the way across. And there's our cuts. Okay, so now we have all one mesh. We're ready for unwrapping. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful to you. Let me know in the comments below how you're getting on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.